Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is July 7th, 2016, and we're gonna take a look at copper. So we came into the year um, kind of looking for a bigger low in copper. And the main reason for that uh, was, is the weekly chart. Basically, if you scroll back, uh, just real simple trend line 2002, 2008, and then 2016. So, um, you know, more or less, you know, seven years or so uh, cycle lows, which uh, generally speaking is, uh, you know, something that we've seen is, you know, with respect to the commodity inflation type of trade dollar topping with these longer term cycles. Uh, now, with respect to copper itself, Okay, early in the year you had, you know, the China uh, crash, if you will, and you know the first two weeks of January, where we had a bunch of different lows down here. Um, uh, you know, the 18th and 19th, you had lows in, uh, you know, in copper, and you had a crude oil uh, low. You had Brent make its low actually in January at that time, dollar CAD top, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, you know, crude oil. Uh, WTI came back and made its low here on this low, February 11th. That's how lows are made, okay, in asset classes. You get divergences. Um, so what about copper now? Well, it made a head and shoulders, had a nice run up into resistance, um, and then spent, uh, you know, the better part of, of, of the second quarter, all of the second quarter, really going sideways to down. And then early here in um in July have traded back up into resistance, big key reversal here just two days ago. So at resistance again. So clearly we're respecting resistance, okay? Uh, from an Elliott Wave perspective, and I posted a chart actually on Daily FX uh, several weeks ago when we were down here, uh, kind of pointing out that we had an Elliott Wave uh, bullish case uh, to go with. You had a one, two, three, four, five, that you could count with an A, B, C, okay? And uh, combine that, you know, bullish uh, eight wave cycle, five up, three down, with, again, the very long-term support that we were at, along with uh, COT considerations, okay? The uh, CFTC uh, Commitments of Traders report showing that you actually had a record amount of uh, speculative short positions in copper down here. All right, um, so we've gotten kind of that unwind and, and the bounce that you would get from the COT, uh, but we have failed at resistance. So from here, you know, leaning towards longer term bottoming process, near term uh, trading, you know, more or less neutral that we've come off resistance. If you get above this resistance level, it's a big deal and you can go a lot higher and I think quickly uh, it would also put you in a third wave position in a breakout uh, and you'd be going higher. If you're looking at copper, you know, literally as I speak right now, um, I, you know, like to see where we are right now, basically hold up as support. I mean, um, you know, if you just look across the, uh, the chart to your left, okay, you've got a great deal of former resistance, okay, uh, that you'd like to see hold as support now in order to, you know, stay constructive uh, on copper at these levels, all right? So, you know, the next few days I think are fairly important. Now, when we take a look at the weekly, again, continuing to fail uh, at this very well-defined resistance, okay? Um, and the moving average that's on here is a 55 week, okay? 55 week, I mean, pinpoint resistance back in May of 2015. And again, just resistance again this week, all right? So uh, it does put copper, again, in a very, uh, wouldn't say a precarious situation uh, because we are coming off of this long-term uh, this long-term support, you know, the trend line from the 20 uh, or 2002-2008 lows, as noted earlier, but it does, you know, kind of put you. Uh, if you're a bull, you should be on the defensive here, considering that you are coming off of resistance 
um, you know, from slope and the 55 week. Okay. Back above here again, you know, to me, that would be an all clear, uh, and really kind of give you the strongest rally that you've probably seen in years. Uh, next level would be up at this resistance level, you know, in the two fifties. Okay. Which, which, which would put you back above the, uh, September, uh, 2015 highs actually. So very much a work in progress. Um, but in position, right, with the combination of long-term support and the wave count in position to surprise to the upside. Um, so, you know, if you're expecting something like that or it's, you know, kind of in your, in your head is something that could happen and you do break out, it, you know, you'll be ready to act because it won't be a surprise to you. All right. So that's all I've got to say on copper. Um, you know, near-term support, kind of like to see this hold in order to keep a, uh, you know, constructive look on copper on this metal, all right? But the all clear and the third wave potential or C wave or whatever it may be, uh, bullish potential up towards the 250s really happens, I think, if you take out uh, the high from two days ago, all right? So that is it for copper. Again, Jamie Setley here. Good luck signing off. Um, with this video, come join us over at SB Trade Desk. Uh, it's www.sbtradedesk.com. Uh, Mike Boutros and I, we offer more analysis and whatnot. Um, you know, analysis like this, longer term, shorter term, you name it, um, on FX and, uh, and various indices. All right, so take care. Good luck. Bye.